All right. Thank you, everyone, for coming out today. And uh, welcome to the Freebase APIs, tapping into Google's Knowledge Graph. Now, before I get started, my name is Sean Simister. I work in developer relations with the Knowledge Group, uh, which includes Search and the Knowledge Graph. And I work on Freebase, the Freebase APIs, Schema.org, uh, and some of our Search APIs. So you've heard a lot over the last couple of days about the Knowledge Graph, but I want to take a little bit of time at the beginning of this talk to talk about what really is a Knowledge Graph. What does it mean to have a Knowledge Graph, and, and how are we using that at Google, and how can you use that in your application? Um, so at the very basics, a graph has entities. Um, in the Knowledge Graph, they're real-world entities, so people, places, things, uh, organizations. In this case, I have uh, an entity here for Daft Punk, and uh, those form the nodes in the graph. And the nodes, as you can see in this diagram, are, are connected by edges, and those edges are labeled edges that represent the relationships between uh, these real-world entities. So in this case, uh, Daft Punk the band actually appeared in Tron Legacy the movie. And so we, we have uh, billions of those, those relationships in Google's knowledge graph, hundreds of millions of those real-world entities, and that's, that's what forms the knowledge graph. Uh, but more than that, each of these nodes is typed. Uh, so we know that Daft Punk is a band, and we know that Tron Legacy is a movie, and we know that uh, there are certain relationships like appears in that appear between a band and a movie, or a person and a movie. Um, and because it's a graph shape, there's no, there's no fixed structure to this. You can add as many connections. So uh, Daft Punk came from Paris. Um, their record label is uh, Virgin Records, and it just fans out from there, and that's how we have uh, so many hundreds of millions of entities now in the knowledge graph, uh, as you can see here. Um, so this is just a little snapshot of, of how, how the knowledge graph is built. Um, every single one of those hundreds of millions of entities has a unique identifier, uh, which lets us treat entities with the same name uh, differently within the knowledge graph. You've probably seen that when you do a, a Google search uh, for something like uh, Boston, and it'll ask you, you know, do you want to disambiguate between the band or the city? Um, and so we'll see in the Freebase APIs how you can use those unique identifiers in your application to access structured data about these real-world entities. Um, and, and importantly, the real-world entities that your users care about, uh, the entities that are important to your application. So I've mentioned a couple things about Freebase, but let me give you the high-level overview. Uh, Freebase is a knowledge graph. It's an open knowledge graph, open to everyone to use. Uh, if you have a Google account, which I'm sure you do, uh, you can log into freebase.com right now. You can see uh, we have 40 million topics, uh, so a little bit smaller than Google's knowledge graph, uh, but it's really densely populated with uh, over a billion facts in there. And, uh, a lot of the entities are, are things that you would expect to see in Wikipedia. In fact, we pulled a lot of data from Wikipedia. Um, so they're those really notable people, places, and things, again, that matter to the users of your application. Um, we've also categorized them by 2,000 types. So remember I said every node in that graph uh, can have a type. Uh, in fact, in Freebase and the Knowledge Graph, they can have multiple types. Um, so if you go, again, to freebase.com, you can see a listing of uh, all the different categories of types we have um, from those, those 2,000 types. Now, the reason you're here today is because of our free API. Uh, so anyone who uh, goes through the developer console can sign up for the Freebase API. Uh, you can use it for commercial purposes as long as you give us some attribution. You can get 10,000 requests a day. Uh, it's, it's really quite easy to use, as I'll show you in a second. Uh, but if you need more than that, or if you want to do some really heavy uh, graph algorithms or analysis on the graph, uh, we provide the entire graph, all you know, 1 billion facts, 40 million entities, as a data dump. So you can download the entire graph to your hard drive and, and do with it as you'd like. Um, most importantly, Freebase is one of the really important sources for Google's Knowledge Graph. Um, and so if you contribute to Freebase and your, your edits are trustworthy and, uh, and meet our criteria, uh, they could end up in Google's Knowledge Graph and in Search. So every one of those 40 million real-world entities in Freebase has a page that looks like this in Freebase. We just recently redesigned this. It's running on App Engine. Uh, it's, it's a really cool new site. Um, there's a lot more than I can show on this one page, uh, but you can see down the right side we have all the types that apply to this node in the graph. 
Um, and if you click those, you can kind of jump down the page and see all the entries in our graph, all the properties that have been assigned to it. And if you don't see what you're expecting to see there, uh, you can add it or edit it yourself. Um, you might notice up in the top right-hand corner, there's a little drop-down box there for English. Uh, we're translating Freebase and the Knowledge Graph into uh, many different languages. I think Freebase is, is uh, targeting about 40 languages right now. And uh, so we're pulling in data from all the different uh, languages of Wikipedia. And, uh, and so if you go to Daft Punk, you can actually get information in English or French or German or uh, whatever language you're looking for, um, all using that same unique identifier. Uh, you'll notice underneath we have a couple tabs here. So properties is the one I just explained. Um, I18N, internationalization, is those uh, international names that I just explained. So if you go to that tab, you'll see uh, you know, for any given language, what, what name we've assigned to it. Um, and we do some, some interesting stuff to decide when an English name should be shown in another language. Uh, the next tab is keys. Uh, so these are, you can think of in database terms, these are foreign keys into other, other databases. Um, so this is uh, the unique part of the URL that will tell you which Wikipedia page corresponds to this entity or which uh, Twitter account uh, corresponds to this entity or which uh, um, Google Plus page corresponds to this, this entity. And lastly, links uh, are just all those edges in the graph, those one billion uh, connections between the real world entities and the Freebase Knowledge Graph. Um, and so if you really want to dig into it and figure out what's going on, what connects to this specific node in the graph, uh, you go to the links page and you'll just see uh, a huge long list of them. Um, there's a very cool thing at, here up at the top, you see it says uh, view specific properties. It's kind of like the awesome bar in Firefox. You can just start typing in uh, types or properties, and it'll start filtering down that list of links. So uh, it's a pretty cool feature, and I encourage you to go check it out after the talk. But today, we're going to be talking about uh, a couple specific ways that you can use the Freebase APIs to uh, add more search, add more semantics to your application. Uh, these are some of the things that you're already seeing Google doing with search and with other Google products. Um, but because there are so many similarities between how Freebase is built and how the Knowledge Graph is built, uh, you can do a lot of the same things that we're doing in search in your own application with the Freebase APIs. Uh, so I'll start off with auto-suggest, um, which is you know, just suggesting entities, semantic tagging, which lets you add uh, entities to your content, entity collections, which I think you've seen in search at the top when you do a search for like zombie movies, uh, geo-search, which is looking for entities but based on location, and lastly, topical web links, which is finding other sources on the web, uh, you know, like that Twitter page or the, the Google Plus page for that specific entity. So the first uh, example I want to show you is auto-suggest. This is something that's been really important to Freebase from the beginning. It's the ability to uh, turn strings into things, as we say. Um, and that's really just a way of saying we take uh, ambiguous keywords, you know, in this case, uh, house, uh, so if you type house into a, uh, a search box, you don't know if we're talking about the TV show or the, the music genre or, or maybe something like the White House. Um, and so the Freebase Suggest widget uh, is a way that you can disambiguate those entities and turn it into one of those unique identifiers for a node in the graph. And once you have that unique identifiers, uh, you'll see from the following examples all the kind of cool stuff that you can do with that. So let me just... Let me just connect to the internet. Uh, there we go. Um, all right, so uh, in the first box here, uh, Say I have a form, I want someone to enter a music group. Um, so you can just start typing, and all of a sudden you see I'm suggesting possible music groups. Uh, I'm using the Freebase graph, those 40 million entities, to suggest uh, you know, plausible real-world entities that begin with the word daft. Um, there's actually quite a few musical groups. Uh, so you'll notice not all of these have daft in the name, uh, but we also look at you know, their Wikipedia page or things like that to figure out what entities are related to them and, um, uh, and rank some of the suggestions that way as well. Uh, you'll see now if I just click on one of those suggestions, 
Uh, this is uh, jQuery widget, and so in, in my JavaScript, I get back this data, um, not just the name of the entity that I selected, but also the, the important uh, MID. That's the uh, machine ID that we use in, in Freebase for uniquely, uniquely identifying all of those 40 million uh, real-world entities in the graph. Um, so this is a really easy way not only to disambiguate things in search or in your application, uh, but also to get those, those strong identifiers that let you do other cool things with the uh, Freebase APIs. Um, and it's really easy to customize. You can see this other example I have here. Um, exact same code, uh, but I've changed it. So instead, it's just filtering down to movies. Um, if I type in Daft there, you'll see movies related to Daft Punk rather than Daft Punk the band. Um, so, and again, if I click on that, I get the ID. Uh, you'll see there's a score in there, and we'll get to that later, but that's basically, this is a search function, and it's returning uh, a score for each entity uh, that, that was returned in the list. So that auto-suggest feature that you saw is a jQuery plugin that you can add to any page. Uh, it's under a BSD license. You can you extend it if you'd like. Um, but it's built on top of our search API. And so underneath the covers, this is all that's going on. This is just a, a get request to the server. Uh, we're passing in you know, whatever, whatever text you've typed so far. Um, and we also have this uh, filtering syntax that lets you say, match all of the following constraints. You know, it must have this Freebase type. Um, you'll remember, if you go back to the Freebase homepage, you'll see a big list of those 2,000 types. And slash music slash musical group is, is one of the types that we uh, organize entities by. So if you send that to the server, this is what you're going to get back. In fact, you're going to get back a much longer version of this, but I couldn't fit it all on the slide. Um, but this, uh, this inner part here with the MID, the language score, uh, that's, that's the, uh, the search result that gets repeated a number of times throughout the results. Uh, by default, you get 20 results back, but you can, there's a uh, query parameter where you can extend that as well. Um, and so using this, we can pass in little fragments of text to get back these ranked lists of entities in Freebase's knowledge graph that uh, match that, that, uh, that keyword and then use those MIDs to do other interesting things in our application. Um, and here you can see this is the, uh, I've got a link here in the slides, so uh, if you, you see the slides after the talk, uh, you can click through to the Freebase documentation and download this jQuery widget. And it really is just one line of code uh, to add that auto-suggest functionality to any input box on an HTML form. Uh, also, you, you'll uh, remember I said this is just, this is just a, a HTTP web uh, service. So you can call this functionality from any code. You can call it from Python or Java. And we have uh, examples on our, in our documentation as well for how to call that API from, from other languages, not just from, from JavaScript. So the next uh, example that I want to show you builds on uh, this auto-suggest functionality to do uh, semantic tagging. So imagine you have a whole bunch of articles of text or videos or images. Um, and I, I don't mean like tens. I mean like millions of these. And you want to categorize them all. Uh, in fact, you know, our friends at Wikipedia are, are uh, doing some interesting stuff with this. And so you start to add tags to the content. You start to um, find ways to categorize it. Um, and then you have to come up with uh, a list of tags. You, you can't just let people tag it with anything, because then it gets, uh, it gets very messy. You don't know how to find things. Um, and so you can actually use the data in Freebase as, uh, as a vocabulary for tagging your content. And that, that gives you a really nice list of real world entities, things that uh, people are going to care about. So let me show you how that works. So you see I just uh, start typing, and it lets me tag stuff using entities from the knowledge graph. Uh, in this case, I haven't constrained it. It's just searching all of, uh, all of Freebase. Um, we get back uh, notable types. So remember I said any node in the graph can have multiple types assigned to it. Uh, but Freebase will do a little bit extra for you and figure out which of those types is the most 
descriptive for that entity uh, so that we can say things like, you know, Jeff Bridges, the actor, or uh, Jeff Buckley, the singer. Um, so you can see this is quite easy. Uh, this is just using uh, another open source jQuery widget called Tagit, um, and they support uh, JSONP web services as a source for tags. Um, and so you can just take the Freebase API, plug it right into that, and, uh, and com autocomplete on any of these entities in the knowledge graph, um, which saves you a lot of time of, with having to come up with uh, you know, categories of tags on your own. Um, this is just a little snippet of the code that you, you use in, in jQuery tag it. So remember I said you can, you can plug in any JSONP web service and use that as a source of tags. Um, so here, here we have the URL for the Freebase search API, and uh, we're just telling it uh, to look at the text that we've, we've typed in so far, pass it in as the query parameter, uh, treat it as, as a prefix search. So we want whatever entity we're looking for to start with the letters that we just typed. Um, and I've limited to six suggestions in this case, but you could, you could use more if you had uh, more room on the screen. Uh, so again, it's, it's more than the one line of code I just showed you, but it's not that much more code to, to add uh, semantic tagging to any application using Freebase data. So the next example I want to talk about is entity collections. Um, so, so far we've just looked at entities from Freebase's knowledge graph one by one. Um, you know, looking up an entity by a keyword or uh, tagging entities one, one at a time. Uh, but what if we want to look at whole collections of entities? Uh, you know, movies by Jeff Bridges rather than just Jeff Bridges. Um, so remember I showed you in the first example uh, when we're doing auto-suggest, we can constrain it to just uh, music groups or just films. Uh, so I'm going to go into a little bit more detail on the syntax of that filter right now. Um, you can see I have uh, this, this filter syntax. Uh, it's in circular brackets. It starts with all, which means match all of the following constraints. Uh, and we only have one constraint right now, which is uh, that it has to have a certain type. And that type has to be slash film slash film, which is uh, Freebase type. And in fact, if you go to freebase.com slash film slash film, you'll see the definition for the type. It's just one more of those nodes in the Freebase graph. Now, if I change this, uh, I can do something like genre action. And you'll see I get a new, new list of films. Uh, these are all coming from Freebase again. And so now I've said, find me all of the entities out of those 40 million entities uh, that match two constraints. Uh, they have to be a film, and they have to have the genre action. Uh, now you notice type starts with slashes, and action is just, is just a word. Um, act, uh, genre is actually what we call meta schema in Freebase. And so we found that there were a lot of, uh, a lot of different properties in Freebase that all uh, represented genre. So the genre of a movie or the genre of a, a book. And so what we did was we indexed those all under the same uh, genre meta schema. And uh, you can see in the, the documentation, we have a whole list of the, the meta schema that are available, available to you, uh, just sort of shortcuts that help you search for these things easier. Um, I can also do contributor. And if I need to do something with spaces, I just put it in quotes. And so now I'm seeing all the films that have Jeff Bridges. Well, not all of them, but the first, uh, the first seven. And again, remember I said that search, uh, search API has uh, a parameter that lets you specify how many results you want to get back. Um, now again, I'm using Jeff Bridges a string rather than an ID like film film. Uh, if I knew that unique MID for Jeff Bridges, I could plug that in right here instead. And that would guarantee me that these are only movies uh, with the Jeff Bridges who won you know, Oscar for Best Actor, not some other guy named Jeff Bridges. So let's look at what's going on in the code. Uh, so again, this is the, the underlying search API. So you don't need to call it from jQuery. You don't need to use JavaScript. Uh, you can make these same sort of collection queries from whatever programming language you're comfortable with. 
Uh, you can see we're not even passing in uh, a keyword query this time. We're just passing in the filter. Um, and so that's kind of the same as saying uh, the query is anything uh, wildcard, uh, but then applying a filter to everything. Um, so in this case, I've, uh, I've done uh, movies that, uh, or sorry, a collection of actors who starred in uh, the upcoming movie, The Great Gatsby. Um, and you see I've used the, the MID for The Great Gatsby uh, because there are many films, um, and this is for you know, the one that's coming out, I think, this week, uh, not, not the older versions. Uh, so there's a lot of, a lot of different uh, ways that you can use this to, to filter down collections of entities. Uh, like I said, there's this meta schema that gives you uh, shortcuts for querying a lot of different properties at the same time. Um, so I've included a couple links here in the slide. You can read more about that in the Freebase documentation. And there are a lot of examples about uh, the sort of things you can do. Um, once again, this is the same uh, sort of JSON data response they're used to getting back from the search API. Um, so you see an ID, a name, what it's notable for, uh, and a score. Remember I said that this is actually repeated. So there are many entries with an MID and a score and, and a name. And this is just a little uh, snippet of JavaScript to show you how easy it is to do a query like that in your code. So here, uh, once again, I'm calling uh, the, the search API directly from from jQuery, I'm sending it my filter, which comes from that uh, my input text box. Uh, I'm telling it I want uh, the output to include the description of the topic. Um, so this is a, uh, the output parameter lets you say uh, that you want more than just that, that MID or the, um, basically these fields here. So ID, name, notable for, uh, all come by default, but using the output parameter, you can say I want description or I want any of those other uh, thousands of, of properties that are available in Freebase. Uh, so it's a really flexible API, and we're just kind of scratching the surface in this demo. Um, and then once you get that data in the callback, uh, you can really just iterate through the results in that query. So uh, you'll see the top level here is result. Um, and in the loop here, we're just going through each item in that result and uh, inserting it into the, the DOM in our, our web page or displaying it in uh, whichever app uh, you're working on. So now I want to extend uh, this idea of collections that we've built up to geo collections. Um, so look, looking for entities not based on uh, the, relation, the, the explicit relationships that they have in the knowledge graph, uh, but based on proximity geographically. Um, so this is something that we've, we've added just in the last year to the, the search API. Uh, I think it's a pretty cool feature, and I, I really hope to see more apps using this feature. So let me show you a demo. This is Google Maps, and this is a little view of Paris with, uh, with some markers on it that correspond to tourist attractions in Paris. Um, and so this is actually live. This is using the, the Freebase API. And you'll see as I, I scroll around the map, uh, it's sending off the search requests and finding me uh, different tourist attractions based on where I'm looking on the map. Um, and I can click on any of those markers, and it's going to show me the name and the description. Because uh, as you saw in the last example, I, I have the option to say, you know, output the description as well. Uh, but I could display any, any number of properties here about one of these tourist attractions. Um, so I think this is a really cool way to uh, take you know, millions of entities and put them in context and make them uh, interesting to the user. Um, by constraining it to only the, the ones that they care about at that specific point in time. And I mean, just to show you here, I can, I can zoom all the way out, go to Rome instead. Tempting the demo gods here. Once I get in close enough, it should start pulling up entities from Freebase. So you can see it's a Roman forum, Palazzo Farnese. Um, 
So it, it really is a massive data set uh, at your fingertips, and uh, there are a lot of really cool things that I think people could do with this in their application. So here's what that, that API request looks like. Um, notice the filter is getting a little bit more complicated now, but it's still, well, at least to me, it, le it kind of reads left to right. Uh, so we're saying match all of the following constraints, uh, and we want them to have the type tourist attraction, so not just anything in Freebase that's geocoded, because there could be other things that are not relevant in, in terms of tourism. Um, and then we have a more complicated constraint over here on the right-hand side, which is uh, it has to be within uh, 5,000 feet of this latitude and longitude. Um, and so you can, you can change the, the radius of that circle that it's matching against. Uh, you can change the geo-coordinates. As you saw in the example, I was changing the, the geo-coordinates dynamically based on the center of the map. Um, so that, yeah, this, this query will find you uh, those uh, tourist attractions within 5,000 feet of uh, somewhere in Paris. Here's what the code looks like in, uh, in JavaScript with jQuery. Um, so you've seen a lot of this uh, stuff before, the filter, the output, um, iterating through the results, and then just creating uh, markers with the Google Maps API and pinning uh, those, those results with a name to the map. Um, I'm going to be uploading the code for the full demo after the talk, and you can see uh, all the other stuff I did to get the description in there, but it's really not a lot of extra code. Um, you can see here, getting the geolocation, uh, we're just going into the, uh, the output, getting the geocode property, then the location, location, geolocation property, um, and then the first entry in there. So now the last thing I want to talk about is uh, topical web links. And so uh, there's a lot of interesting things that you can do with a knowledge graph of 40 million entities and having all those relationships between them. Uh, but it com becomes even more interesting when you can link out to the rest of the web. Um, and so as I showed you at the very beginning on that keys tab in the Freebase, we have uh, foreign keys out to other databases or, or links out to other websites. Um, so an entity on Freebase, like Jeff Bridges, uh, will have a Freebase page, uh, but he might also have a YouTube channel. He might also have a, a page on Google Play. Um, and so we, we try to link out to as many of those as possible, and we're continually adding more of these foreign key relationships out to other data sources. So let me show you how easy it is to, to do something like that. Just choose Jeff Bridges. So this, was, this is actually an unconstrained uh, suggest box. That's why you see all kinds of different entities there. Um, and once I pick him, you'll see uh, the links that we have right now, the web links that we have right now for Jeff Bridges in, in Freebase. Uh, there are actually more than that. We have all the different language versions of Wikipedia. Uh, but for this demo, I, I constrain them down to, to this list. And you would probably want to do the same thing in your application, depending on uh, which sites you, you want to show. Um, and you can see uh, you know, different, uh, different entities are going to have different, different types of links. Uh, so if I click here, I can go to uh, Richard Branson's Plus page. So not only is that a way that you can uh, provide more information to the users of your application about the entity that they're looking at, uh, but it's also a way that you can tap into other APIs. And uh, I'm going to be doing a code lab tomorrow afternoon where I show how to use these links into YouTube uh, to do uh, really cool mashups between the Freebase API and the YouTube API. Um, so to do these, these topical links queries, we're actually uh, using a different part of the Freebase API called the Topic API. Um, the Topic API is, you can think of as a, a kind of shortcut around the search API, where all we're interested in is one node in the graph, but everything there is to know about that, that node in the graph. And because we're asking for everything there is to know about that node in the graph, uh, we again need some filter syntax. 
Uh, so here we can say, uh, just filter it down to values from the uh, common topic social media presence, which is like the Twitter and Facebook links, or just filter it down to uh, topic equivalent web page, which is things like uh, Richard Branson's homepage or, or things like that. Um, and in fact, we can add multiple filter parameters on the end of that too, and so we can say, uh, give us both of those things, but nothing else. Um, and this is what it looks like. It's uh, another uh, nested JSON structure. Um, so we got the ID for the entity at the top, then we have a dictionary of all the properties we asked for. In this case, it was just the one property. And then within there, we have an array of values. Uh, each value has, um, has a value, <laughs> um, the, the actual value that's stored in the graph, uh, and as well as a textual representation of the graph. And so that may vary for different types of, uh, types of values, like dates and times. Um, we also record the, uh, the creator and the timestamp of every fact in, in the Freebase Knowledge Graph. Uh, so you can always see uh, who created what, when it was created. And, uh, and then lastly, some of the, uh, the properties like name, as you saw, get internationalized. And so if there's uh, a language attached to that particular value, then the, the lang property will have uh, that language code in there. So this is how easy it is to do with uh, jQuery again. Uh, we're just uh, attaching that uh, suggest widget to an input field that when, once we get that MID back, remember I, I said it's important to turn that uh, keyword search into an MID because once you have it, you can call the topic API like we are here um, and get structured data about that specific entity that you chose from the auto suggest. Um, and then once we have that data, we can just loop through that, uh, that array of values for the, the web links and display them on the screen like I did. So those were the, uh, the five, five different examples of, of what we're doing with uh, Freebase and the Knowledge Graph. Uh, there's a lot more, and so I encourage you to look at the, the Freebase documentation. Uh, but uh, definitely we've seen a lot of people using the auto-suggest feature. Uh, there, I know there are a couple startups that are using the, the tagging feature. You've seen uh, collections of entities in, uh, in Google Search. Uh, GeoSearch is a really exciting new feature that we've just added. And uh, topical web links is a great way to mash up Freebase data with, with other APIs. Uh, here are more links just uh, to get you started. So all the APIs that I talked about today, as well as the, the different libraries that, that let you uh, use that code. I also mentioned I have a code lab tomorrow. That's 2 till 4 in room 3. Uh, so that, uh, bring your laptop. We're going to be building an app using Freebase and YouTube APIs. As well, I have office hours tomorrow morning from 9 to 11. That's up on uh, the third floor in the Knowledge Graph booth. Uh, so you can come and ask me anything about Freebase or the Knowledge Graph. Uh, I'd be happy to, to hear about what you're working on. Uh, so thank you very much for coming out. Uh, here's the link to the slides online. Here's how to con contact me online. And I'd be happy to take any questions if you'd like to, to step up to the mic. Hi there, I've got a, a quick question for you if I could. Absolutely. Uh, one of the things you mentioned is that it's possible to get an RDF dump of, of Freebase. Is, is there, are there ways to get filtered uh, versions of that dump? For example, if we wanted just an, an RDF dump of a particular entity collection, or should we get the whole thing and then, and then filter it ourselves? Right now, there's only one RDF dump, so you have to dump, download the whole thing and okay. filter it yourself. Uh, we have had a number of people asking for different sections of, of Freebase as a, a data dump. So uh, we're considering different ways to do that, but we haven't found the right way to, to provide slices of the, of the, uh, the data dump. Uh, it is a pretty simple format. So the RDF format that we use is, is one triple per line, which means you can kind of grep over the file. You don't need a specific RDF parser if all you want to do is filter out you know, lines that have a certain type of, of uh, data on them. Uh, so that's, that's sort of the best way to handle that use case right now. But we're looking for better ways. All right, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I have uh, two quick questions. One, how big is the RDF dump? Like in me megabytes, gigabytes? Is there uh, an it, estimate? It's, uh, 
what is it? It's around uh, 15 gigabytes now. And that's a zip file, so when you unzip it, it gets uh, about uh, five times bigger. Um, so you, you need some disk space to, to go over it. Um, because, because of the format, uh, like I said, it's a, it's a text file that's been gzipped uh, with one, one uh, triple in the graph per line. You can actually use some tools like gzip grep uh, to go through it without unzipping it. Um, uh, and also, I, I went to the site, and I couldn't figure out how to get a list of all the um, object types or the node types. Is okay. there an API to get that list, or is there just a publicly available? I mean, I know it's on the front page, but that was only like a subset, I assume. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so on, on the front page of Freebase here, we've got a list of all the categories of, of schema that we have. Um, and then if you drill down into one of those categories, you'll see all the types. Uh, so we don't have all the types on one page because there's thousands of them. Um, but that's, that's how you're able to navigate them. Um, and then from there, you can, you can drill down into any one of those types and see all the properties that, that go along with that type. Uh, so that's, that's how Freebase is organized. Uh, one more question at the back. Uh, yeah. Um, in the JSON responses, I noticed there was like a cost node. Yeah. I just had a question like, what was that? Uh, yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's something that we just have in there for, for debugging uh, just to, to monitor the performance of the APIs. So it's not like cost in terms of monitoring? <laughs> yeah, the, the API is completely free, and uh, we have no plans to change that. So. Cool, thanks. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just curious about uh, equality. So say the popular actress uh, Jane Doe goes and gets married and is now Jane Smith, and the entity appears twice in Freebase. I want to ask all of the movies that Jane Doe or Jane Smith or any name of that entity appeared in, how does Freebase handle that? Um, so changing names is actually not that, that difficult. It happens quite a bit. And because we have those unique MIDs for each node in the graph, but to you can multiple have multiple sources. If if the entity appears twice, and I know that they're equal, is there a way to tell Freebase? Right. So that that's the mo more difficult case when we we load two authoritative sources, and they both have a Jane Doe, um, and we kind of discover that after the fact, and we have to reconcile them together. Uh, so we have a number of tools for matching them and, and noticing when two entities share enough properties that maybe it's it's worthwhile for a human to take a look at it. Um, and then we, we actually flag them for a merge. Uh, so I, actually anyone uh, who logs into Freebase can find duplicate topics and flag them for merge. Uh, then they go into a queue where they're reviewed. And once they're reviewed, there's a, uh, a software process that will, that will do the, the messy work of merging them together. Yeah. <laughs> yes, and please, if you're, you're willing to help us out, uh, work through that queue of duplicates. It's, uh, <laughs> it's a very noble duty. Hi. Um I noticed you had a score factor for entity types that you get back. Well, how is that calculated, or what does it mean? Uh, so the score on the, the ranked list of results is, uh, is kind of an opaque number. Uh, we, don't, we don't give any guarantees about, you know, you could store that in your database and use it a year later, and it would, it would mean anything. Uh, the only real guarantee is that something that's more relevant to your query will have a higher number, and something that's less re relevant will have a lower number. Um, but yeah, it's based on a number of things, either in, in uh, the Freebase graph or in the knowledge graph that we use to, to rank those search results. So for example, if I have, uh, let's say, Madonna, and it could be a singer, but it could be also you know, some other personality, does the score mean anything between the two? Can I use it to sort? Yeah, absolutely. So it, it should, it, the, the score of the, the results should reflect the notability of that, that uh, that entity. So the Madonna that I think you and I are both thinking about right now is probably the one that's going to have the highest score. And that's based on what? Like based on? It's based on uh, where we've seen it in the data that we pull from, so Wikipedia and other sources, okay. um, as well as some other signals that we, we look at internally. Okay, thank you. Absolutely. Um, if you're developing a schema uh, in Freebase yourself, does the key somehow support that that gets conflated, you're able to do the same searches with the API on the, the things that you're developing sort of privately in, yeah. in Freebase? Yeah, so, so any, anyone with an account can uh, create their own schema. Uh, it, it goes under their own namespace, so you'll have a username and uh, your schema will all start with slash user, slash your username, and then, then the schema key. Uh, so no one can overwrite anyone else's uh, schema that way. 
Uh, and then our mailing list has sort of a, an informal process of promotion uh, where you can kind of call out your schema, discuss it with people and say, uh, you know, what, what, do you think, what do you think of this schema? Do you think it's worth promoting into one of those uh, common namespaces that everyone can use? Um, but yeah, you can definitely d develop your own schema without worrying about uh, trotting on other people's data and anything that you do on your own is available through the APIs. Great, thank you. Awesome. Um, hi, is there a RDF notation or a schema.org notation to help you uh, structure the data from common websites? It, it's something we've been working on. So uh, the schema in Freebase tends to be a little bit more detailed, a little bit more uh, denormalized than schema.org. And so uh, we've, we've taken a couple cracks at, at doing a mapping between the two schemas. Uh, we don't have anything automated where you could you know, make a Freebase request and then just get schema.org on the page. Uh, but I think that would be something interesting to, to no, look I into. Meant, um, tag co uh, content on HTML to help you directly from that point of view. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that would be a great idea. And another thing, do you rate the link or the facts between entities or not? Uh, I'm sorry, could you repeat do that? Do you rate the uh, links or the facts between entities? Is there a score or the there, there's no uh, there's no score on the relationships or the between entities. So uh, things are either true or they're not in Freebase or or they're a bug. Um, we don't we don't have degrees of truth in Freebase. Two short questions. Yeah. How do we manage updates, and how do we make sure that the updates are not garbage? Okay, uh, we're, we've run out of time here, uh, but I can, I can definitely answer your question uh, uh, after this. Thank you very much.